a long, long time ago, I grew up in a magician's workshop in Paris. His name was George Milius. He was an extraordinary man, a man with a mischievous spirit. His desire to fill life with wonder was so strong that one day he offered me the moon. And then he died, alone and forgotten. I was an orphan and a tramp took me in. A nice fellow, an exile, a damn talented kid. That guy had two real friends in life, Harold and Buster. I really worshiped those three. Without them, I know I wouldn't have become what I was and what I am. They prepared me to confront my fears. They even taught me how to take pleasure in them. I like being afraid. Thanks to them, beasts and monsters fascinated me more than they frightened me. I never forgot what the old Parisian magician told me. Take a bite of this apple. Never I destroy wish. the child inside you. Yes, take a bite. That's your most precious treasure. Oh, I feel so strange. Time to pick up the sword, Walt. Whoa! Well done, Walt. Let's go, Merlin. How did you escape? Oh, but I couldn't. They jumped me into firewood. Oh, my nose! What's going on? Maybe you lied to me earlier, Pinocchio. When I grew up, I started traveling. Far and wide throughout the West, the far West. I loved dragging myself around in stagecoaches until we were held up by a really wild bunch. Wackos for weapons. So then I headed north, northwest. But it was nuts up there, too. Kamikaze style. You know the genre? Anyway, in a frenzy, I hit the road for Oregon. That's where I met Alfred. He was living in an isolated motel beside a road, surrounded by strange birds. Frankly, the guy was a little shady. One evening before dinner, his nephew showed up, a turbulent kid. A real truant. I liked Alfred, but he freaked me out. So one morning I skipped town with Stanley. A real genius, that one. Though he actually freaked me out too. We spent our time at the Karova milk bar, downing Molokos with his rugs, which really makes up your Razaduk and get you ready to go a little berserk. Then one day, Stanley and I ran into this big guy, went by Sergio. With him, time stretched, stretched, and stretched like gum that ends up snapping back into your face. After that, I finally left the West to go to the big city, the one and only. And of course, I met a happy flock of freaks there too. A crackpot cabbie, some totally strung out ghost hunters, a man who was a bat, 
a gangster in a tux, and a very edgy boxer, the Bronx Bull, they called him. I've always dreamt of 12 rounds between him and the short guy from Philly, the one with the eye of the tiger. What's obvious is that neither one of them could have gone up against my Japanese warriors. Their swords are fearsome, and even more when it's a woman who uses them. It was thanks to her that I ended up back on the West Coast. I was already old, but I was crazy about that girl. She introduced me to bowling, made me read comic book detective stories, and had me drive the hairpin turns in the hills above Los Angeles. And that's also where I ran into Jean-Luc again, thanks to a kid who was a fan, a raving madman. At the Garmar Theater, I spent whole nights with Quentin. We delved into my old memories, of Jean-Luc, of course, but not only. I saw my life pass before me in there. There was old Orson and his sled, Humphrey in his trench coat, Reverend Powell in his tattoos, Jean in his can-can, Moses in his tablets. My uncles were there too with their guns. And look, over there, there's Frederico and his fountain. There was also Lawrence and his camels, Rosemary and her newborn, and I remember the beach and that shark, the Jedi and his Vader. Jack and his nightmare Christmas, and even a few Navi from Pandora. I'm tired now sometimes. I've experienced so much. I'm old, and some people say I'm already dead. Yet I have the sweet impression that my life just keeps going back to the future. Don't you agree, Marty?